Is Earth nothing more than a loose form? Okay, that question implies that it's possible that the scenario given in the Matrix movie is our reality, and I'm totally against that notion. I do not believe for a second that the Matrix movie was putting out an accurate reflection of what the simulacrum is. This is not what I have found. This is not what I feel. I have to go a lot, even though I'm a data, a data set guy, even though I, I, have to, I have to see it, understand it, and be able to put it into a visual model for me to be able to convey it to others. I also go by intuition. I go by empathy and especially imagination. I don't believe that this existence is, is controlled by an alien civilization that is sucking away our life forces. I don't feel that at all. I feel that we signed up for this. I feel that the original idea was to go through life sims until a predetermined period, and this was all for our development. I also feel that none of that has changed, although something's been added. I don't know if that that added element was unforeseen programming, adding an, an, an evil or uh, like a like a like an artificial intelligence uh, ego maniacal program into this that we were not told was going to be here. Uh, I don't know, but uh, no, I do not subscribe to the idea that our life forces are being siphoned off. And I, I don't, I don't. I believe that we're going through life sims. I believe that we're 100% immortal beings. We signed up for this and that it was necessary to create this artificial construct that I call the simulacrum, which just means a copy of something else, a copy of something real, meaning being in the copy, we're in the false reality. But that was necessary because inside a false reality, we could contain all the things that we would never want to actually experience in the real reality. We can grow and mature inside here far beyond, far beyond anything that could be experienced outside this containment holography. I believe there's an outside universe and that outside universe isn't very dissimilar to what we're experiencing now. I just don't see it. I don't see the, I don't see why a simulation of anything would even be accurate or the output from the study of what of what goes on inside that simulation or how the simulation unfolds would be of value to anybody on the outside unless it was following very similar protocols in a very similar sim a similitude of the truth it would have to be to to design a universe that's artificial and it not be a copy of a real universe your output would have no value whatsoever. You've got to get as close to the real thing as possible in order for anything you for you to learn inside there or for our overseers to learn as we're going through all this. Uh, it has to be the same. It has to be so similar that while we're living in it, we're absolutely convinced it's real. And up until up until very, very recent times, We've always, we have always believed that this is real. It is only the very, very few unique minds throughout history that kind of ask the questions like, man, is this, is this even happening? Is this, they see historical events unfold before their eyes and like, man, this ain't real. This, this is crazy. We do have those personalities through, through uh, our histories that like whoever, whoever Shakespeare was, his real name was not William Shakespeare. Whoever he was, the identity behind that avatar or that social mask, he knew the truth. He wasn't lying when he said all the world's a stage. And throughout all his plays and writings, he hints to the artificiality of our existence. But it's no different than the old Hindu texts. But the Dravidians didn't invent the concept. They got it from the older Sanskrit writings. They got it from Aryan, from the purity of Aryan beliefs that this world is an illusion. It's a Maya. It's no different than the Australians who believed it was a dream time. But they were a very unique, so they're a very unique, not, not a race of people. They're dark Caucasoid. They are of Caucasian blood, but they're almost midnight black. That's like the people that time forgot, the continent that time forgot. 
where all the marsupials were, all these weird plants and animals. The flora and fauna of Australia is so unique because it's been forgotten by the rest of the world. The rest of the world continue, uh, continued on after the vapor canopy, but for some reason, vapor canopy conditions lived on in Australia maybe for thousands of years after the rest of the world moved on. I don't understand why. I haven't really done sufficient research on Australia. I would like I would like people in Australia to send me any data they have on anything of human manufacture being over over 500 years old in Australia. I am familiar with two major expeditions that arrived on the shores of ancient Australia. I have done the research. One of them was Chinese and it involved hundreds of ships and it was well over a thousand years ago. Now, I'm also aware of the Egyptians. 2005 or 2,900 years ago, somewhere in that window, an Egyptian fleet or maybe a series of fleets landed in Australia. But other than that, I would like to know because Ayers Rock and many other anomalies of Australia don't make sense to me. Australia is almost as if, and listen, don't go to other YouTube channels quoting me on this because this is conjectural. I am not, this is not even a part of the archaics research. But there are anomalies in this world that I haven't really divulged. They're all in my notes and files. That kind of makes me wonder. We have the world as it is, but I don't know where these other continents and land surfaces would come from or how they would actually get in contact. But we have these, we have evidence like the Voynich Manuscript which is basically simple. It's just the artwork is impeccable, but the writing structure, listen, for intelligence agencies around the world to employ their software and decryption, and they still can't figure out the linguistics, they can't even fit what, what, what linguistic family the Voynich manuscript was. The script is 100% believed by academia to be a real script in a real language because of its repetitive sequences and they know that's a characteristic of communication and language. But for the most in, but the, for the most advanced software in the world to be applied to the Voynich manuscript and still not be able to decode it means we're dealing with an artifact, a book that comes from either a timeline that is no longer operative, where which which all all of its material has virtually been scrubbed from the histories or we're dealing with an artifact that somehow was carried from another continent that we're not we're not told about that we're not there there are other there are other objects there are other things that have come into our reality throughout throughout history that doesn't make does, they just don't make sense inventions that were way before their time the anti cathera computer being being one 61 differential geared mechanisms so flat all working properly we haven't been able to replicate that technology until the 1840s but i don't know there's there's many examples and you have to read the type of literature that that, that i've read like like forbidden archaeology thousand pages huge super boring and technical but when you get to the good stuff it's awesome William Cordes's source book project, I tell you guys all the time, but Harold T. Wilkins from the 1930s and 40s, the books he put put out were fantastic. It's We have so many discoveries of things. It's very difficult to process this information because it's so easy just to say, hey, you know what? We got all these different things. Yeah, okay, they came from different times in history and cases closed. But the more we analyze the, ar the, ar the archaeology, the more we look at these individual artifacts that are inexplicable, the more mysteries that we find. Ancient jade discs with highly sophisticated looking glyphs found all over China that we can't even decipher today. And then in the 1970s and 80s, when scientists were, were renewing their interest in that, the whole collection comes up missing. Listen. There has been documented cases over and over and over of fantastic artifacts and relics, collections, all of a sudden vanishing in the archives of the Smithsonian Institute. This isn't made up. Now, I know some guys on other channels talk about this, but they're citing sources that were citing real publish, public, uh, publications from 100 years ago and beyond where the Smithsonian Institute was actively doing this. And we have reports as late as the uh, 1990s where 
<coughs> the FBI shut down whole archaeological excavations in the American Midwest, strip searched all the archaeologists, made sure they didn't carry any of the artifacts, then loaded up everything that they were finding, made them sign non-disclosure agreements. And I have this in my chronicle. And I, I mentioned these little incidents, too where the federal government got involved and shut down scientists, made them sign NDEs, uh, non-disclosure agreements. And then, you know, that's uh, once once the federal government steps in on an arche on, on archaeological find and they make you sign NDEs, it's over with.